What's up, everybody? It's your man. I do a barber back with another Beyond the Chair podcast where I go live, seems every Thursday, <laughs> to discuss it and everything barbering because I wasn't live yesterday. I got busy and it happened last week as well. So who knows? Maybe I'll change it to Thursday. Highly doubtful. It'll stick to Wednesday. But as the title of this podcast suggests, boy, 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 barbershop prices are out of control, guys, like completely out of control. Um, this is like one of those like top three, top five topics of any barber or beginner barber, things that you like may want to know, a big topic of discussion. Barbershop prices, best clippers or trimmers, how to remove a bald line, or... Jeez, the other one just left my mind. Um, geez, I, I, geez, the, the damn thought just left my mind. It was like right in my mind, then it just left my mind. But what's up, guys? Shout out to everyone that's watching. Don't forget to smash the like button if you're feeling the content. So uh, barbershop prices, what's best? What's not best? I mean, this is all oh, Sweden's in the house. Hey, and by the way, Wherever you're watching this from, drop it Drop it in the comments. Your state, county, city, zip code, area code, whatever it is, your continent, drop it in the comments below. Let me know where you guys are watching this from. We already got Sweden in the house repping for Europe. Any more Europeans in the house, let me know. Or if we're just going to represent in the good old USA. We got Maryland out here representing. I'm giving shout outs already. And we're just starting the podcast. <laughs> H-Town 503 in the building. Jacoby Wantanobi. What? Oh, you're so funny. But barbershop prices. Let's talk. So this is a real good topic. A lot of people want to know what's the best barbershop price? What's the fair price? Let's just be honest, guys. I'm going to be the first one to tell you there is no right or wrong answer here. You could charge however much you want. I always, you know, I hear these broke barbers that still charge 15 13 18 20 or whatever i always hear these people saying when it when you when you actually find out someone's charging like let's say 50 bucks for a haircut 100 bucks for a haircut 40 60 for a haircut they always look at them like man they charging too much oh man they charge too much for a haircut man who who's gonna pay that well if they're busy obviously somebody's gonna pay for it because somebody's already paying for it you know what i'm saying why are you upset with this guy that he's charging this much money that that should really be and always hear this a lot that should be a motivation to other people to want to charge more money for haircuts um see philip he's saying he in his city the average haircut price is 50 dollars. now philip i'm not sure where that is we got some people from uh nyc in the building we got saint pete clearwater tampa i've, I've been to all those cities man I, I love those those uh those cities there i used to live in florida before I moved here to Texas. But a lot of people always want to say that when they're talking about barbershop prices, they want to make fun of the other. Now, here's one thing I always tell somebody when, it, when you're trying to debate something, whether it's like you're doing a little compare and contrast, whether it's expensive haircuts versus cheap haircuts, good haircuts versus bad haircuts, someone who cuts hair quick versus someone who cuts hair slow. Oh man, we got Australia, the, Aust the continent of Australia. I hope y'all got those wildfires under control. I'm not sure. But I always do this when I'm trying to have this debate where there's a compare and contrast, like I just said. You can't really have a, a very strong, stern argument if you have not been on both sides of the coin. It's kind of hard for me to, to talk about what's life like as a millionaire when I'm not a millionaire. It's kind of hard for me to give you advice and say things to you saying like, oh man, the new Lamborghini sucks. Like, don't get that one. Get the old Lamborghini. This day, and I'm making all these cases when I've never know, never owned a Lamborghini. Same thing with these haircut prices. What you have a lot of times is the guys who are on the bottom of the barrel, talking about the guys who are up here at the top of their game, charging, you know, very, if, if you want to call it, we'll just call it for the sake of the argument, expensive haircut prices. They always want to look down on them for charging so much, saying that they're taking too much money from people, which a lot of people, when, when people are broke, let me, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. When people are broke and people spend excess money, 
it's usually their own doing. It's not that someone is like saying like, hey, get over here and taking money out of their pockets. Most of the time, people are doing it to themselves. It's not like if I'm broke today, there was a, there was a road that led to me being broke. And it was probably some excess spending in most cases. People living beyond their means. They're not able to manage their money well. Therefore, they end up broke or in a position where they're like uh, working paycheck to paycheck. They're trying like scratch and claw just to stay above the water. This is usually their own doing. It's not a barber's fault because a barber charges 40, 50, 60, 100 dollars for a haircut. By all means, when you got guys who are charging at an excess of that amount, it's easy to find someone who, who charges much less that can do probably the same job. Let's just be honest. You know, and you might ask yourself, why would someone pay 50, 40, 60, 100 dollars for a haircut? One is because they can. Let's just be honest. Don't try and sit. And I hate this when you, you have the broke barbers out here talking, telling people like, man, you, man, I know you can get it cheaper over here. Look, if that's how he wants to spend his money, let him spend his money that way. I, I, I don't know why people want to turn into these financial consultants all of a sudden when it comes to someone else's wallet and someone else's money. Worry about your money. A lot of times these dudes can't even manage their own damn money the right way. Now, the funny thing is, like I said, you can't have you can't make a strong argument argument when you haven't seen both sides. When you haven't lived on both sides of the fence, you can't make that discussion when you're talking about expensive haircut prices. You can't put guys down who's charging fifty, a hundred dollars for a haircut if you've never done it yourself. Because I tell you what, though all those broke people that want to complain that people charge too much for haircuts, whatever, whatever, if they hop on the other side of the fence, I tell you what, they will not want to go back. And I'm telling you guys that right now. So there, there's plenty of different barbers that subscribe to the channel, right? We have guys who are not even in barber college, guys who are in barber college, guys who can cut hair really good that don't have a license, guys who that don't have a license that don't cut hair really well. Then I have for people that have been in the profession for years that subscribe to the channel and is probably listening to this video. And by the way, share the video with anyone that uh, you know might find this helpful or might just have a interesting uh, dialogue or whatever. So you guys might look at one thing and say, oh man, like right now I'm charging $5. I'm charging $3. I'm charging seven, $10 for haircuts, $40, $50. Dude, what the hell? Are you crazy? Who the hell is going to pay this? Obviously someone is because that's what he's charging. Right. And he's been in business for quite a while. Now, if I take that same person who's charging anywhere from $15 or, or less, whatever, and I'm like, okay, Here's my clientele, buddy. Here's my clientele. Don't. This is what they're used to paying, and they'll gladly pay it to you. And you cut their hair for a good two, three, four, half a year, a year. Trust me, you will get used to that way of life. You will get used to being paid that much, and then you'll see that that side of the fence is a lot better than charging very little for money. Now, look, I'm, I'm highly with raising your haircut prices. I'm highly, I'm very high on barbers getting what they want barbers being paid what they're actually worth because there's another part of this argument and i probably should write this down because i didn't write any notes down for this podcast i'm just kind of like talking off the top of the dome but there for those of you that are watching if you're going to stick around for the next five minutes remind me to talk about and then it just already left my damn mind oh wait no damn it left my mind damn see how horrible my mind is and why i should be writing this stuff down but Haircut prices. Let's just go back. The, the thought will come back to my mind eventually. But haircut prices. You really are not going to like to go back on the other side. If you make, 30, let's say you make thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a year, right? And just all of a sudden you just land a bomb job where you're getting paid six figures. Will you want? Answer this question to yourself. You don't need this is rhetorical. You don't even have, you can answer this or you cannot answer it. Would you want to go back to making fifty grand a year? Let's just be honest, guys. Like, really, are you going to say, nah, I'm going to trade in this Mercedes. I'm going tra to trade in this Audi. I'm going to go back to riding in the, in the, uh, the Nissan Maxima. Yeah, I'm going to go back to that life. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to go back from owning a house to, you know, staying, staying over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, nah. Nah, this life, I, I, don't, I don't like this lifestyle. Nah, nah, I'd rather get paid 50 grand and just be humble and blah, blah, blah. Guys, there's nothing wrong with charging more. 
There's nothing wrong with it. The thing is, well, we're not even gonna talk about my opinion because my opinion right now doesn't matter. When it, when we're talking about what we're talking about right now, which is uh, what I think a haircut price should be in the average, right? Because if you look up the average of a haircut price in the U.S., it's I think it's like close to thirty dollars. But if you ask a lot of you guys, if you guys sound off in the comments below, talk, you know, tell me how much you guys charge for haircuts. Let me know in the comments below. How much do you guys charge for haircuts? Let me know. Because I was having this, uh, this conversation with one of the barbers here. He's actually about to leave soon. He's, he's planning to move and it's going to be farther away. So then, it, of course, it's not going to be feasible for him to really work here. It's not going to really make sense. Uh, so he was, I was talking. Uh, talking to him about that one potential area that he was going to move to. And I was telling him that, wow, that's a good area. You could charge a lot of money for haircuts. You could easily charge $40 for haircuts, $35, $40 for haircuts. Uh, in that area, it's pretty easy. Uh, you guys probably know my haircut prices by now. But uh, I was telling him, I was like, yeah. And then, of course, he comes from the mindset that let me undercut. Let me undercut so I can get all the business. Which, dude, you're doing it wrong. That's not how the game is played. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you charging? Why would you undercut everyone and do a disservice to, to the industry, do, do a disservice to the profession, do a disservice to all the other barbers around you, and charge less? For what? Why are you going to work really hard to make very, very little compared to everyone else in the area when you can just go ahead and charge what everyone else is charging? I really don't get it. And he was like, man, I could just charge $20, $20, which is what he charges here. Uh, and I was like, why? Why would you do that? That makes no damn sense at all. You're One, you're moving to this area that's very expensive, which means it's, it's expensive to live there. So you're going to work twice as hard, three times as hard to make the same amount of money as you would living in this area that we live in. And you're not getting anywhere. It's like that rat in the wheel. It's the same concept. He's just the rat in the wheel running the race with himself. So Philip uh, is charging 25. Niall is charging 15. Willie Jackson, the average in uh, Virginia, is 20 to 25. Now, the thing is, you can you can charge. Like, I always hear the argument where typically, this is typical, right, in bigger cities. Do this if you're feeling it, guys. Like, smash that thumbs up. You know what I'm saying? Stop, stop being, stop ear hustling and eye hustling. Stop looking at me and, pre and, and smash the like button. You know what I'm saying? Show some damn love. Now, the funny thing is, I always hear this argument where people say, I live in a small town. I can't charge too much. There's not enough people here. I can't charge too much. Because typically in a bigger city, things are more expensive. Cost of living is more expensive, which means everything else is going to be more expensive. Haircut prices, things like this. So, I always hear this argument and I'm like, okay, I get it. I understand what people are saying with that. But there are some examples of people that live in smaller cities that charge a premium for haircuts. It can be done. Now, I will tell you this. There are some factors that you're going to have to do to get there. So you, you can't just plop your way into a new city or when I say new city, I mean small town. Into a small town. And just start charging fifty dollars for haircuts. It's not gonna. It's not gonna work that way, guys. A lot of those guys, like Jermaine Walker. Not sure if y'all follow him on Instagram. He's out of Florida. He. I'm not sure if he moved yet. I know he was talking about moving. I'm not sure if he actually moved yet. But he was charging. I think last time I checked, he was charging like sixty bucks for haircuts in Leesburg, Florida. You guys can look up Leesburg, Florida, if all you want. Look it up, please. Very small city. It's in Central Florida, not far from Orlando. And very small city, very, very small city. Now you would think, how the hell is he charging 60 bucks for haircut in that small town? This is, this is where he, I wouldn't say he's the exception, but it's the rule. He compounded this over time. He grew up in this town. He has been a barber for over 20 years, which means over time, ooh, the thought just went, came back to my mind. Please, guys, remind me to talk about uh, fair trade and tenure. Please, someone, remind me to talk about fair trade and tenure. Okay, because I'm going to get that. I knew the thought would come back to my mind. Remember, fair trade and tenure. Remind me to talk about this. Someone in the comments. 
in like five minutes if I don't talk about fair trade and tenure. So Jermaine has been in this town all of his life. He's grown up here. He's been a barber for over 20 years, cutting these people's hair. Now, over time, like I say, cost of living goes up. Things go up. The price of a brand new car 50, 60 years ago was a few thousand dollars, right? A brand new car. Or maybe not even that. But pr prices of a home were, you know, like 10 grand. Sounds amazing, right? You know, if we could have that same price in 2020, that'd be amazing. Everyone would be homeowners. Everyone would have nice cars. But things aren't that easy. The price of things go up. You can look in the, at an inflation calculator online and just look at how things have inflated over the years. The price of, of homes, the price of cars, the price of food, the price of rent. All of this stuff has gone up over the years. And you can look up this stuff and see how barbering is well below the trend. For a lot of those people that think, oh, you know, charging more than $20 is too expensive for a haircut. Guys, I've been paying $20 long ago. I remember paying $15, $20 for haircuts a long time ago. And what I mean by a long time ago, I'm talking about like 20 years ago. Why are haircut prices still in the same range 20 years later? To me, that makes no damn sense at all. How the hell is a barber you, because you do, I assume, right, if you're listening to this channel, you want to have a good way of life. You want to have a good quality of life. You want to be afforded the things that you see people living their best lives on Instagram. You want to take vacations. You want to have a, a, a vacation property. You want to own a home. Maybe you want to own multiple homes. Maybe you want to just come and go as you please and, you know, be your own boss and live that type of life, which let's just be honest, it's not everything it cracks up to be, but you want to do all these things you want to see other people do, people do online, which is highly feasible. It's, it's very easy to do. The thing is, you just got to charge a little bit more. Now, as you get older, you're going to realize like you can't work as hard as you were when you were younger. You can't just grind it out. There are few exceptions to that rule. So with that, in that case, you got to start working harder, not Smart, well, geez, you got to start working smarter, not harder. I didn't flip the damn thing. I'm about to tell y'all some craziness. You got to work smarter, not harder. Now, the thing is, if younger people, this is what I always tell people, I behoove young people to work smarter and harder. So when you're young, you have that energy. You have the fervor to go out and get it. You have the energy to stay up all night. Be in the barbershop all day, cutting. And whether it's, not, whether it's barbering or maybe you have other ambitions to do other things. or You know, a lot of barbers have side hustles. So whatever you do, like you have the energy. You have all that fervor to do this, that youthful exuberance. You have it. But when you get older, you got to work a little bit smarter. This is why people refer in the sports world veterans. You know, he pulled a veteran move or... He got. He found his way through the struggle because he was a veteran. He's been there before. He knows what it takes. You know, when you're younger, you can make all these mistakes. But when you're older, you can't make the same mistakes when you're younger. You just don't have the same leeway. You know, time is not on your side. So I always tell barbers, you know, the more you get into this, this career field, you should be charging a lot of money. Like, if you ask a barber, guys, listen to this. I, I want you guys to just do a little experiment with yourselves, right? Because we're talking about barbershop prices and them being out of control. I want you guys to do this experience and smash the like button if you're finished or if you're feeling it. Talk to some veteran barbers, barbers who have been in the game 10 plus years, okay? And ask them, how much were they charging for haircuts when they first started versus now? Now, I'm going to tell you, the shocking majority of, of, of these people the price difference won't be that much, guys. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. Now, the reason I say that is the barbershop owner here where I work, he's been working in this area for like seven years. He just raised his haircut prices after seven years. Seven years. He finally raised his haircut prices, which makes no damn sense to me. So he was charging his clients $15 for haircuts for all this time, which for me is asinine. Oh, shout out to you, Philip, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. Um, I was like, really? You haven't raised your haircut prices out of all of these years, really? I'm like, dude, you could easily, you should be charging in the 30 plus dollar range by now over the course of seven years. Um, but it is what it is. And recently he changed, he raised his haircut prices. So now he's charging 20. Um, and 
I'm not sure his exact prices, but he raises haircut prices. Good for him. Kudos. But that's just how it is. Now, I'm glad. See, it's funny. The, the I talked about the... the let me scroll to the comments because who, whoever that was reminded me. Who was that? Let me give him a shout out because he actually reminded me. Who was that? Dang, I, I, I want to give him a shout out, but dang, I can't find his comment because he actually th threw the reminder in the chat, but I actually remembered it now. Um, oh, yes, Flex Smith. Shout out to Flex Smith, man, because he... Uh, Wait, is that Nate? I just thought about that. All right, so yeah, yeah, we're so now we're gonna talk about uh, fair trade and tenure, because that's what I it like left my mind earlier, but now it's like back in my mind. But well, not back in my mind. I actually remembered it after I told. Uh, oh, okay, so it's Nate. Okay, so Nate, he's over here. Nate, Nate works right around the corner from me. Well, not right around the corner. Nate works like what five miles from here. He actually used to work here for a little bit. My man, uh, my man Nate. I need to uh, come back over there. Nate, you, you have not returned my phone call, by the way, Nate. I'm still waiting for you to return my phone call. And don't call now either. You know what I'm saying? I am live. All right, so now let's talk about a fair trade and tenure. Is it fair? Is it fair for you, the person, to slave and not get paid because a lot of people they talk about minimum wage what it should be what it shouldn't be and is it fair look it's fair if you signed up for it i'm just going to be honest with you it's fair if you signed up for it if you came into the situation knowing that let's say your haircuts are going to be a dollar and 50 per haircut and you sign off on this agree to it and then do the job that's fair trade. What's not fair is you being you cutting hair for 20 years. Let's say we'll just use $20 because it's just a nice even number. And it's a number that a lot of people can come to grips with because it's common in this industry. So let's say you have been cutting hair. And this is common, guys. This is a real world scenario. This happens all the time. So let's say you go, you're a barber. You've been cutting hair for 20 years. You want to, you move to a town. Now you want to um, go and find a new shop. Or maybe you're in the same town and you just want to change barbershops because you don't like the one that you work at. You go to a new barbershop. Let's say they're charging $20, that magical $20 number. It's a really good average. A lot of people throw this, this weird number around. I don't know. Remind me to talk about $20, too. Please, remind me to talk about $20. Someone in the comments, please remind me to talk about uh, $20. Shout out to Ma Dukes for the super chat. Hey, if y'all want to donate to the channel, please do so. And don't forget to smash the like button if you're feeling it. So, imagine you're a barber. You've been cutting hair for 15, 20 years. You go to a barbershop, they're charging $20. Imagine this. You're working next to someone who has been fresh out of barber college, has no professional experience, but now he's also charging $20 for haircuts. Is that fair? Is that fair trade? When you talk about this, is this fair trade? Is this how the industry works? Unfortunately, it does in most cases. Now I know some every barbershop is different, right? So this exception cannot be the rules. I know other barbershops work differently where the more higher tenured barbers get paid a little bit more. They charge a little bit more for their haircuts because of their expertise. Now, unfortunately, in this industry, what you have is you'll have people working right next to each shoulder to shoulder to each other. Person who has 15, 20 years of experience charging $20 working next to someone who is out of barber college and even in some cases, someone who doesn't even have a license that is charging the same amount. Is that fair trade? No, that is not fair trade. Because if you look in any industry, if you look at any profession, because this is a profession, barbering is a profession, we got to go to school to get a license, we have to pay to maintain our license, and other things and other scenarios. But what I'm saying is, if this is the case, that is not fair trade. Imagine if I worked, uh, let's say, let me pick a job. Let's say if I worked in a factory. No, 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 no let's not say a factory. Let's say if I worked in a... 
let's say I worked in an office building with potential for me to grow or whatever, right? If I've been working with the company for 15 years, I'm not going to get paid the same as someone who has just got out of college or someone who has just been hired on at the company. We're not going to get paid the same. Our expertise and our skill is on two different levels. So why would they pay this person the same to start out as I am? That is not fair trade, in my opinion. So for those of for you barbers out there, please, please level up. Please level the hell up. Because, yes, I, I understand that Mr. Uh, Mr. One Time 50. Now, uh, he says he's been in barbershops where different prices cause problems. I understand it. I get it, man. But that is not fair trade. When you're working next to someone who is fresh out of barber college and blah, 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 that's not fair trade for you guys to both be charging the same amount. You guys are not on the same level. Now, there are some customers that only care about price. I talked about this last week where you should not be encouraged or motivated by getting someone by price, meaning attaining customers based on price because the same way you get them is going to be the same way you lose them because if, if you're willing to undercut someone and just to get a customer to charge a little bit less than everyone else is, you know what's going to happen. The same thing is going to happen to, to that customer with someone else because someone else is going to be willing to charge a little bit less than you are and then, then they'll attain that client. And if, you, if your clientele base is just based off of price, then you're going to go nowhere uh, real fast because you know what's going to happen. You're going to be fearful to raise your prices because you're going to be so scared that everyone's going to jump ship and leave because you got them based off of a cheap price. And then, of course, they're more than likely going to lose or you're going to lose them based off of a cheap price. So is that fair trade, guys, to be working next to someone when you've been doing this t over 10 plus years, 10, 15, 20 years and get paid the same as someone who has just started? No, that is not fair trade. Now, Mr. One Time, he said he's been to a shop where it has caused problems. Now, here where I work, I charge different prices than everyone else. Um, does it cause problems sometimes? Yes, but that's just how it is. The thing is, um, it's funny because I've ran into a few customers where they've come into the barbershop with only $20. And I think to myself, wh why do customers think that twenty dollars is the magical number like i mean obviously this has been perpetuated over time because obviously people think this right they go somewhere else and they they think oh twenty dollars is good enough and they literally that is all that they bring is twenty dollars makes no sense to me why would you go anywhere and expect to pay a certain amount i don't go out and eat steak or i don't go if i want to go out to eat somewhere or if i want to go get gas somewhere i'm not going to be like oh i think gas should be 150 a gallon so i only brought 10 bucks and i'm expecting to get like seven gallons like no that's not just that's not how the game works it's all different everywhere smash the like button if you're feeling it guys don't be out here ear hustling and eye hustling <laughs> d-style boxing says because most ATMs work in 20s. Well, and, and see, that's the problem too. Because I hear that, I'm glad D-Style Boxing just, just brought that up. Because that's something I actually was not going to talk about. But since he brought it up, we're going to talk about it. So it's funny because I, I've heard this argument plenty of times from people that charge the $20 range. They say, hey man, I don't want to charge too much. I don't, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to feel like I'm hitting people over the head. Like I always hear that. And they, they turn into these philanthropists and they want to be a humanitarian all of a sudden. And they want to care about people's finances, which, you know, McDonald's, Nike, Adidas, Taco Bell, well, any, any major company, they don't give a damn about your, about your wallet. They're trying to make the most money that the company possibly can. And they don't give a damn about you. Jordan don't give a damn about you. LeBron's sneaker prices, he don't give a damn about you. He's trying to make the most money for him. And, and I, like I said last week in last week's podcast, you need to be worried about number one. Worry about number one first. Now, I always hear this argument with people. Say, they'll say that, oh, I only charge 20, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I charge 20 and then, you know, they'll, they'll hit me with the five for the tip. So I'm basically getting 25. I'm like, okay, that's stupid. That sounds that sounds so stupid. Okay, 
people that pay thirty dollars still tip. People that pay twenty five dollars for haircuts, they still tip. People who pay fifty, hundred dollars for haircuts, they still tip. So it doesn't mean like if if you're charging more than twenty dollars, the threshold if it exceeds that threshold, then no one's gonna tip anymore. No, that's dumb. Like no, that's not the truth. I had a guy earlier. Well, my phone's here. He got his haircut and beard done. $40 uh, haircut is, you know, that's what I charge for haircut and beard. $40. He tipped. So there's no threshold to where someone can't tip if you charge more than $20. So I hear that people say like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going hey, to work for the, for the for, work for the five. And I'm like, that's the dumbest logic. Like, where the hell are y'all getting this dumbass logic from? Like, wh where do people get this? this? <sighs> now, back to what I was saying. 20 like where, 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 where do people get this magical twenty dollar number from that they think is the industry standard? That's not an industry standard, guys. Like maybe they're accustomed to this. It's like I had a, a client come in once. I shouldn't even say a client, just a customer, because they're not a client. I haven't seen that person since. Um, she didn't bring cash into the barbershop. She didn't bring. Credit cards into the barbershop. No, 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 no. You might be wondering, what what, what did she bring to the barbershop? Uh, allow me to tell you. <laughs> this girl only had Cash App. She was like, oh, you don't accept Cash App? And I told her, no. I'm like, I accept cash and credit cards. Now, look, I do have Cash App. I have PayPal. I have, I think, another one. But I don't use those to accept barbershop money because I'd rather have my money come through either a cash or my square account. Now I would, I looked at her and I said, now look, okay. In her defense, right. Cause I don't want to just completely shit on it. Right. In her defense, I do know a lot of barbers that accept money through cash app, Venmo, whatever those little other little things are. I know barbers that accept money through those payment, uh, those, um, Whatever they go, what is the, I don't even know what the, the technical name. Zell, yeah. I know a lot of people that accept things through this, but for your for this being your first time coming to an establishment, why in the hell would you come in and only have this and not have either cash or card or really just cash, right? Why? Why would you, why would you do this? I I, I don't know. But it also falls back in line with the whole $20 rule when people will only bring $20 and then they're like, oh, I got to go to the ATM or, oh, you take cards. Like, I don't get it. But, guys, this is a really good explanation that I want you guys to explain. Is that fair trade? Because no one, no one has told me d has charged me chicken price for the lobster I'm tipping <laughs> D style, he says he I pay my barber 45. One time I had to go out of town and he wasn't around. I paid someone 20 and regretted it. Now, look, I'm a firm believer in you get what you pay for. I have no problems whatsoever paying in excess for something. I have no problem in paying for convenience, which for me, I don't cut people's hair early hours or after hours for nothing. I'm charging for this. So there's an upcharge. If you want to get your hair cut with me before or after hours, it's going to be 50 to 60 bucks. I charge more money for house calls. If you want to do this, because this is a convenience for you, major inconvenience for me. Now, people can say whatever they want, whether they're like, oh, that's not fair. or Oh, that's too much. Or, oh, okay. Make, try and make a career out of being convenient for people and trying to be the cheap fist for people. Because the same thing I told to the barber about how he wanted to come into this new town that they typically charge around $35 to $40 and undercut everyone. I was like, why? You're older, right? He's not, he's like 40. Why would you want to do this? Why would you want to work this hard? Why would you want to live below average? Because honestly, that mentality is just below average. That's a below average mindset with when the first thought to your mind is undercut, be the cheapest. Because look, for you to cut a bunch of bunch of hair, right? You're going to have to cut a lot. You are. It's just, it is what it is. You're going to have to cut a lot. 
Now, me personally, I don't want to have to cut a lot to make a lot of money. Imagine if I was charging $20 for haircuts. For me, let's say, uh, let's take a day like yesterday, for example, which I had to leave early. Had to leave early. I, um, let's say, okay, perfect example. Yeah, yesterday is a really good example. So I had to leave work early, right? Made a few hundred bucks. Kind of sucked that I had left early because it was turning into a good day. And I was like, oh, kind of sucks, you know. But it just is what it is, you know. Family comes first. But from if I were charging $20 for haircuts yesterday, for me to make the money I made yesterday, I would have had to cut. Wow. I would have had to cut like 15 people. Yeah, and then hope that they tipped, right? So I would I would have had to cut a lot of people just to make that much money. Now I want this I want this to sink in you guys' head. Do you really want to work that hard for that? Like the way the world is, right? It's 2020. There's so many ways to make money out here. There's so many hustles. There's so many grinds that are out here. Like, look, you should always have more than one source of income. You should always, uh, you should have different ways of money coming in because I'm going to tell you what, one income or one revenue stream is too close to broke because I'm telling you what, now look, I don't mean like, oh, every revenue stream is bringing in equal amounts. That's not going to happen in most cases. Most keep like, let's say you have five revenue streams, more than likely all five revenue streams are not going to be the equal amount coming in. You know what I mean? You'll, you will Typically, your main job will bring in the most money. Then you'll be able to, you know, have a little side game, bring in some here, then bring in some here. You know, and then, then the compound effect is going to happen, and then you're going to make your money that way. But, you know, it's, it's not very fun to have to work that hard just to make a little bit. Be smart, guys. It's 2020. There's so many ways to make money out here. Like, there, there's so many things. Like, you can start, you know, and a lot of stuff, all it is, it just takes a little effort. That's all it is. Exactly. Look, Daniel Castro says, you don't make money being fair. The goal is to get the most you can till that becomes the average for your services. If not, they can go to super cuts and pay. Yep, exactly. And you know, I, I cut a guy earlier because I got a client coming in. So he might be actually waiting outside the door. I'm not sure. Francisco. No. So uh, this particular guy, he... Uh, Oh, did you hear me call you? Oh, you just got here? No, oh, I was here, but I didn't know you were... You know. Oh, were you sitting there? Yeah. This is Francisco, guys. I was like, I knew it. What time is it? Is it your... Yeah, 3.15. Okay, so see, I got to cut Francisco's hair. I had a feeling. I was like, he's probably... like, How long were you waiting? Uh, four minutes. <laughs> four minutes. Okay, so I, I kept uh, Francisco waiting for four, four minutes. Uh, How much are charged for kids? 20 and 25. Now, uh, I forgot... Me just yelling his name, I just lost my train of thought. I totally... Did you remember what I was just talking about? Did you? No? You weren't listening? No. Okay, good. Uh, but I got to cut Francisco's hair. I uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, like I said, don't forget to smash the like button for all 30-something of you guys that are in here. Um, share the podcast. It'll be uploaded next week. I still got to upload last week's to this week. But yeah... It's time to level up. It's 2020, right? Uh, see, th this is perfect because he's here. So we, I, I've, I've been meaning to talk to Francisco because Francisco, he's just got a nice new shiny car. Purple, right? Yeah. Charger? Yeah, see, he's leveled up in 2020. My man Francisco, with him leveling up with that car, it means you got to make some more money. Yeah, basically. Yeah, so it's 2020, guys. It's time to level up. It's time to stop playing. It's time to get to the money. There's too many ways to make money out here in this world, with the, especially with the internet. The internet, there's so many ways you can make money. Just be smart. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort. If you put that in, you'll feel the rewards later. But again, a lot of things take time. You, it just won't happen right away, guys. So it's just like with barbering. You won't build a strong clientele right off the rip. Sometimes that takes a little bit of time, but it takes a lot of this. So I'll see you guys next week. It's been your man. I do it. I'm about to cut Francisco. We're out of here. Well, holla, guys. <laughs>